All right, hi guys, this is Adam Koo here with a special uh, report on uh, some earth-shaking news uh, that came out a couple of days ago on the 15th of August, uh, and is uh, the fact that um, Harry Markopoulos, who is uh, well known as a fraud investigator, accounting scandal investigator, revealed that you know General Electric GE, that used to be one of the biggest companies in the world, uh, could be a major um, uh, accounting fraud case, and that he alleges that GE is hiding about $38 billion in losses, and it could be going bankrupt in the next five to six months. So I thought it's really interesting to take a look at this and to see from a trader's perspective, how do you, uh, you know, how do you profit uh, from such a situation, right? So if you're ready, let's, let's dive into it. So what happened was, again, a couple of days ago on the 15th of August, this was all over the news, right? Uh, this guy, uh, Mark, sorry, not Mark, his name is Harry Markopoulos. I think that's how you put Markopoulos, right? Uh, he, he announced that uh, he discovered that G stock, or rather GE, again, is a major fraud. And it's a, it's a bigger fraud than Enron and WorldCom put together. Now, for those of you who are too young to remember Enron and WorldCom, I'm going to remind you of that in a short while. So basically what he's saying is that GE is going to be filing for, bank for bankruptcy in a couple of months and the stock could go to zero, all right? So it came out in all the major news and um, the moment the news was released, obviously GE stock uh, plunged by about 10%, but it has recovered slightly from there, you know? Uh, now, first of all, a few important things would be, now why is this really, really big news in the investing community? Why did it really shock me as well? Well, a couple of things you have to understand, right? Number one is, again, if you don't remember Enron and WorldCom, let me jog your memory. Or if you're too young to know this, it's something you've got to know, right? So uh, about 10 years ago, sorry, this was more than 10 years ago. This was back in the, the year 2000. So yeah, sorry, you know, time flies. This was about 19 years ago, right? So 19 years ago, there were a couple of major accounting scandals and fraud cases that were revealed that caused some of the biggest companies in the world to collapse and go to zero within a couple of months, right? And one of the biggest one was Enron, okay? Now, Enron was, in fact, the sixth largest American company, right? And it was rated six times most innovative large company in the US. In, in other words, it was one of the uh, most admired companies in America at the time. And it's an energy uh, and commodities company, right? And what happened was, it was then revealed, the people found out that they were cooking the books. In other words, they were overstating their revenue, understating their expenses, and the profits were all, a lot of it was fake, basically, right? And the moment it was revealed, um, you can see the stock price, you know, in, in the good, during its heyday, it went from $3 uh, to close to $90 per share, all right? And the moment the fraud was revealed, it collapsed from $90 per share to zero. It went bankrupt and 60 billion uh, of market capitalization, that's what the company was worth, it was worth 60 billion uh, to zero in just four months. And of course, the executives, uh, the CEO, they were all sent to jail for major accounting fraud and it freaked people out, right? And uh, uh, sometime after that, uh, we had a WorldCom, right, which was even worse. So WorldCom was uh, the largest telecommunications group in the world at the time, and it was worth $186 billion. And again, you can see the stock price went from almost nothing to uh, about $55, and from $55, it collapsed again to zero in just four to five months. And again, the CEO was sent to jail, everyone went to jail, right? And from $168 billion, it went to zero. So this was something that shook the investment community, WorldCom and Enron, uh, two major uh, companies going to zero in a few months because it was revealed that they were cooking the books, all right? They were hiding billions of losses. And this guy, Harry Mokopoulos, is now saying that GE, General Electric, one of the most admired companies in the world previously, is worse than WorldCom and Enron combined. Okay, so it's pretty big shit if you think about it. If it's true, he alleges it's true. I've got no idea if it's true, but if it's true, it's pretty big shit. Okay, now, next question is, 
who the heck is this guy? Who's Harry Markopoulos, right? Is he credible? Well, I think so, right? And a bit about this guy right now. I'm sure some, many of you have heard of um, the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme. If you have not, if you're too young to know about it, you got to know about it, right? So this guy, Bernie Madoff, he ran a Ponzi scheme for over 20 years, okay? Uh, and the scheme where, you know, was, you know, he had people investing you know, something like $60 billion into his fund, which was all fake, right? Basically, he fabricated all the profits for 20 years, you know? And what happened was in 1999, uh, this guy called Harry, he said something's wrong because, you know, Meadows Fund never lost money, right? No matter how good you are as an investor or trader, you can't make money every day, every week, every month, every year. It doesn't go up in a straight line. It goes through ups and downs, right? Happens to everyone, happens to me, right? I've got losing months as well, right? But this guy Madoff is like making money every day, every week, every month, right? And he just went up in a straight line. And this guy, Harry, is saying that something's wrong. So he started to dig and dig and dig because he's a forensic accountant. He can dig to find out if things are real or fake. And he discovered that Madoff's... Um, whole fund was a major Ponzi scheme, right? It was a fraud, okay? And in 1999, he went to the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission. I think he went to the FBI and said, hey, this guy's a fraud, go check him out. But no one did anything. They didn't believe him. They say, no, 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 you're wrong and all that. And, and people ignored him for nine years, all right? Until fi finally in 2008, during the financial crisis, um, the whole thing was revealed to be a fraud and people who invested in Madoff lost, lost all their money, right? It was a $65 billion Ponzi scheme, and this guy was then hailed as a hero, right? And he wrote a book that said, no one would listen. I told you, you know, I told you so, but no, you wouldn't listen, right? <laughs> okay, yeah? And after that, he also went on to uncover a lot of other Ponzi schemes uh, of uh, hedge funds that were disguised as Ponzi schemes that were worth billions and... Because of this guy, many people went to jail. He put many people in prison for fraud. He helped to save many, many investors. So now he's coming up to say, hey, you know what? I just found out that GE, General Electric, is doing the same thing. And you know what? It's going to collapse. It's a fraud, right? So big news. Now let's take a closer look at GE, the company. By the way, let me make a, a full disclosure and disclaimer right now. I don't own shares in GE. I never have. In fact, I'm short GE stock right now. So in fact, I will profit if GE stock goes to zero. I'll make a lot of money. So let me uh, get it out of the way. Let me have a full disclosure and I'll, I'll tell you why I took a short position on GE. Now a bit about GE. GE was founded in 1892 by Thomas Edison, right? And it's been around for 127 years. It's It used to be one of the most valuable companies in the world back in the 1990s. In fact, uh, it was competing with Microsoft for the biggest company in the world and it beat Microsoft, right? So GE was bigger than Microsoft, bigger than Apple, bigger than any company in the world back in the 1990s, uh, led by Jack Welch, known as the greatest CEO of the century, right? And in fact, GE was one of the original 12 members of the Dow Jones Industrials Average. And in fact, GE stayed in the Dow Jones for over 100 years, right? One of the longest... Uh, stocks in the Dow Jones index, but it's been kicked out of the Dow Jones a couple of years ago because, you know, it started to underperform and, and not do well, right? So if you take a look at uh, the, the history of the stock, you can see it went from um, $2 per share over here when it first started all the way to $60 per share. That was at the height of its reputation under Jack Welch. And once uh, Welch left and a new CEO took over, uh, you know, trouble started brewing and uh, you can see the stock went from $60 uh, and it's now all the way to $8.67. And what Harry Markopoulos is saying is that, you know, it'll be going to zero in a couple of months, it's going to be filing for bankruptcy, all right? So uh, that's what he alleges. Um, you know, what do you think? Is it true? Leave your comments in a section. I'm very interested to know your thoughts and I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Now, some of you may be thinking, Adam, why didn't you ever buy shares in GE, all right? Especially after the price, you know, went down, isn't it undervalued? Isn't it a good opportunity? And the answer is no, right? The reason is very simple because GE fails my criteria of a fundamentally good business. 
For those of you who have taken my value momentum investing course or have attended Wealth Academy, you know that I only buy companies that are fundamentally very strong businesses. And GE uh, f has filled my criteria for many, many years, right? So for example, one of my most important criteria is that a good business has to have consistently growing revenue, net profit, and cash flow from operations, right? And you can see, let me just show you, uh, if you go to Morningstar, which is my favorite research website, uh, you can see under the, under the financial statements, one of the most important things to look at would be uh, cash flow from operations, right? How much cash is the company generating from its business operations? And you can see uh, this is in billions of dollars, by the way. And in 2014, it rep reported 27 billion in cash flow, uh, 19 billion in cash flow, 2016 minus uh, uh, 0.24 billion and 10 billion and 4 billion and 2 billion. So first thing, it fails off the bat, right? I only invest in companies where the cash flow from operations increases consistently year after year after year. And you can see for GE, it's very inconsistent cash flow, had negative years, positive years. In fact, it's on a downward trend. So it's a lousy business. You never touch a lousy business. And if you look at a balance sheet, it's really scary, right? Why? For any company, you want the current assets to be more than the current liabilities, where current ratio must be more than one. Now, GE's current ratio is 0 0.67, right? Which means they've got more current liabilities than current assets, which means it's really scary they can't even meet their short-term obligations. So it's a company that I would not dare to touch uh, with a 10-foot pole, right? It's a lousy business. And the other reason why I never dared to touch it was because it is not the first time that GE has been accused of cooking the books. It's not the first time that people have accused GE of, being, uh, of doing a lot of accounting uh, fraud, right? Uh, in fact, back in the 90s, when Jack Welsh was CEO, people are saying that it's too good to be true because GE has always uh, beat analyst expectations, right? The earnings per share has always gone up, has never dropped. And they say, how is that possible, right? And it's like too good to be true. And if I take a look at this chart, you can see that under Jack Welch, right, this is uh, GE's reported earnings per quarter. It just kept going up, right? And after Welch left and this guy... ML, the new C CEO, took over. Suddenly, miraculously, the earnings that were reported every quarter were like blah, all over the place, which is more realistic, right? Because, you know, in life, nothing's perfect, but, you know, it looked too perfect, right? So people said, you know, something's wrong, right? So since those days, I've always been weary because the moment a company is accused of financial irregularity, you know, I always believe when a smoke there's got to be fire, right? I mean, I don't know how big the fire is, but there's some kind of fire, stay away. So I've never dared to buy GE because of, of this thing, right? So now the fact that uh, it's being accused of being a huge cover-up, um, you know, $30 billion uh, being covered, and, and what Marco Polo is saying is that it's just the tip of the iceberg. It could be worse, right? And if, if what he says is true, GE could go to zero, all right? Now, the question is this. So as a trader, we are always thinking of how to make money, right? Normally, we make money when the stock goes up. But how do you make money when the stock goes down? How do you profit when a stock collapses? And, you know, some people who could be very morally, uh, what do you say? Right? Well, they say, you know, Adam, you know, how can you make money when something goes down? That's very immoral. That's very evil, right? Well, the way I look at it is whether I make money or not, it's still going to go down if it goes down. So why not make money in the process, right? So I find that as, as to be a successful investor or trader, you have to learn to make money in both directions, whether something goes up or something goes down. It's kind of like to be a fantastic Jedi, you have to know both the, the light side and the dark side of the force. But only then a true Jedi will you be, <laughs> to quote Star Wars, right? So having said that, um, how would you profit if the stock price were to go down, right? Now, before I talk about that, let me talk a bit about uh, this as well, okay? Let's look at a chart of GE, okay? Now, first of all, if you look at the overall chart I showed you earlier on, right? So you can see that it's been on a major downtrend for quite a number of years, right? It's, it's been going down. But the question is, is it going to get worse, right? And if you look at the most recent chart over here, uh, you can see it's a clear downtrend, obviously. The moving averages are sloping downwards. Uh, the candles are below the 200 moving average. 
200 sloping down. So based on the technical chart, it's on a clear downtrend. Now, let me just say that I never go long or go a short, go short a stock just looking at fundamentals or just listening to news because news can be manipulated as well. But I only go long or go short a stock when it's confirmed by the technical charts, when the charts confirm the thesis, right? And it's confirmed that it's on a downtrend. Now, you can see here was a major level of support, major support uh, at $9, right? So supporting the stock price, and the moment uh, this fraud was revealed or alleged fraud was revealed, the stock gapped down, right? It dropped, over, dropped all the way to about uh, $7 plus, right? And the moment it dropped, guess what? The company came out to defend itself, which obviously they would. What do you expect? You expect them to say, yeah, we're, we're wrong, you know, we're fraud. Of course not, right? So the CEO came out and the CEO said, no, this guy's wrong right you know g is fine in fact the ceo started to buy up two million dollars of the shares himself to give confidence to people right so why did he do that i don't know right maybe he has no idea that it's a fraud himself right because he didn't read the fine print right, of the financial statements maybe he knows a fraud but he's covering up maybe it's not a fraud you know no one knows right but the point is that he went in to buy shares and they are Analysts who are also defending GE and they saying GE is fine. There's nothing wrong with it, right? Goldman Sachs is saying that you know, there's nothing wrong with it. So because of that, the stock price recovered slightly after dropping like 11% down. It oops, sorry. It recovered uh, back up a bit, right? And now if you look at the technical pattern, right, you can see that it's a nice short pattern, right? Because it's support, 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 break support. And when it retraces, you want to do a quick short to short the stock before it goes down again, if the downtrend continues, of course, right? Now, remember that nothing drops in a straight line, okay? No stock goes down in a straight line. It will go down, it will rally up, and then it will tease you and kill you again, right? If you go back to history and look at uh, Enron, you can see how Enron, Enron stock collapsed, right? From... $90 to zero. Now, it did not go down in a straight line, right? It went down, it went up by 31%, went down, went up, went down, went up. Okay, and why does this happen? Because along the way, there's always going to be hope. People are hoping, oh, it's going to recover and they buy and they die. It's going to recover, they're going to buy, they're going to die. And, oh my God, it's going to recover, they're going to buy, they're going to die, right? So the market likes to tease you, give you hope and kill you. Give you hope and kill you again, right? So during these short-term rallies, or we call them dead cat bounds, that's when you want to short the stock in order to get the maximum profit when it goes back down again, right? So if you believe that GE will go to zero, or you believe that even if it doesn't go to zero, but if it, if it drops by half from $8 to $4, how could you profit from it, right? So there are many ways to do it. One way is to short the stock directly. And you could short the stock... Uh, but it will be quite expensive to short the stock and it could be risky because if you short the stock and the stock suddenly gaps up, which I don't think would, but if it gaps up, you could also lose money if you're wrong on it going down. So is there a way that we can profit from it going down, but at the same time, if it doesn't go down and it goes up, instead, uh, we won't lose that much money. So it's kind of like, you know, how do we bet a dollar to make uh, many dollars and that's what makes a good trade you always want to risk a dollar to make more than a dollar and if you're wrong well so be it you lose a dollar but if you're right you could make a lot of money and the best way to do it is by using options so i'm going to show you right now how i would structure an option trade uh to profit if the allegations are correct so with that let's take a look at the option charts all right so let's take a closer look at the charts uh, as of yesterday, GE closed at $8.38. So that's the current price right now, $8.38. Let me just write it down over here, $8.38. Okay, so we want to make a bet that GE is going to go down to, say, $4, right? So again... Um, Marco Polis alleges that GE uh, is hiding $38 billion 
uh, in losses, right? $38 billion. Now, $38 billion represents about 40% of the market cap of the company, which means that if he's right, we expect GE uh, to drop by 40% in market cap or roughly drop by half, right? So in other words, from $8, it should drop to $4, right? So our target price could be for G to go to $4. And of course, if it goes bankrupt, it'll go to zero, okay? Now, personally, if you ask me, I feel that, I think he's right. I think, I think it's, it, you know, it's, you know, it's really, it's really a fraud, right? That, that's what I think, right? Uh, but here's what I think, right? Even if it's really a fraud, uh, you never know when the stock's going to go down because you can bet that there's going to be potentially a lot of cover-ups, right? Where the company's going to cover up, the account is going to cover up, and it, it, because it has happened all the time. So the question is, when is it going to go to zero? No one knows. It may take months or years, right? So even if we are right that it's a fraud, it may not go down because of the cover-ups, right? So you've got to understand that as well when you're taking a trade. All right, so uh, if it doesn't go down and it goes up instead, either because it's not a fraud, right, or it's a cover up and it goes up, we, we must know when to cut our losses, right? You can't be stubborn and hold on to a trade. You got to cut your loss when you're wrong and, you know, call it a day, right? So, where would I cut my loss, right? So, I think that looking at the charts, if GE were to go back above this level of support, remember, support becomes resistance, right? If it gets back, above this level and above the 200 moving average to about maybe $9.70, I would probably cut my losses, right? So nine seventy would be where I would admit that, okay, maybe I'm wrong, maybe Harry's wrong, it's not gonna go down, it's gonna go up, right? So always, so as a trader, always have a place you're gonna cut your loss and have a target uh, price where you're gonna uh, take your profits and run, right? So. With that, let's take a look how we would structure this trade. So there are a few ways to do it, right? One way is to simply buy a put option, right? Buy a put option. Now, again, if you don't know anything about options, please watch my free videos on introduction to options trading, right? And if you've taken my options trading course with Bang Pham Van, uh, the basic and advanced course, you know how to use options to profit whether something goes up or something goes down, right? I find that to be a great investor and trader, you have to learn how to use options uh, to magnify your profits and minimize your risk, all right? So anyway, basically a put option is a contract that will allow you to sell the stock at a certain strike price before an expiry date. So one way is to buy um, a put option, that's it, all right? So let's look at a simple way to buy a put option. now. Again, uh, Harry thinks that it's going to go bankrupt in four months. All right, so four months is four months will be about 120 days, right? So we're going to buy a put option for 120 days. And let's see what happens if we, if we do that. So we're going to go to trade over here. And I'm going to look for the option that expires in 120 days. So there we go, right? So we could use this. Uh, option that expires on the 20th of December, 121 days from now. And we're going to look at the put options over here. So what is the strike price that we're going to select for the put option, right? So uh, because I think it's going to be a major move down, I'm going to buy a put uh, slightly out of the money. So I could buy uh, the $8 put over here, right? So how much would it cost me to buy this put? You can see it will cost me about 73 cents to buy this put, okay? So what this means is that once I buy a put for 73 cents, I have the right to sell GE shares at $8 strike price, at $8. So in other words, if GE goes to zero, I still have the right to sell it at $8. I can sell it at $8 when it's worth zero, which means I make $800 per contract because one contract is 100 shares, okay? So let's see. Let's take a look at the profit and loss graph if I were to do that, okay? So, I'm gonna go on this, click buy. I'm gonna buy a single contract. Let's look at one contract of a put option and I'm gonna analyze the trade over here. All right, so you can see that to buy this put option is gonna cost me 73 cents per share. 
and one contract is 100 shares, so one contract is going to cost me $73. So let me write it down over here, all right? So uh, if I buy a put option, uh, it's going to cost me $73. That is the cost of buying the put option. And this also happens to be my maximum risk. So if I'm wrong, uh, the worst that can happen is I lose $73 per contract. All right, so that's my risk. Let's put an R over here. All right, so over here, you can see the profit and loss chart. Now, on the y-axis, you have got the profit, right? This is the zero line over there, all right, zero line. So this is $100 profit, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, 400 bucks, eight. Hundred dollars in profit, and on the x-axis you've got a stock price. So the current stock price is now at eight dollars and thirty-eight cents. Right, that's the current stock price. If the stock price goes up to nine dollars or ten dollars, you can see that I'll be losing money. Right, you'll be going below zero. But if the stock price goes down to four dollars, you can see I'll be making a profit. If the stock drops to zero and goes bankrupt, I'll be making uh, about $700, $750, right? So let's take a look at how this works. So again, um, if the stock goes down to $4, drops by half, I'll be making about roughly uh, $320, okay? I'll be making $320. Okay. And if the stock goes down to zero, I'll be making about $720 roughly. Per contract, right? So question, is this a good deal? Essentially, I'm betting $70 to make $300 or even $720. Okay, so if I'm wrong, I lose 70 bucks. If I'm right, I make 320 to 720. Now, what is my risk to return ratio? So if I take uh, 320 divided by 73, um, I'm risking a dollar. Sorry, I'm risking, um, I'm risking one dollar to make four dollars. And in this case, I'm risking a dollar to make eight dollars. Sounds like a pretty good deal, all right? But and of course, I could buy more than one contract, right? So if I buy uh, 10 contracts, it will cost me $730. But if I'm right, I would make a uh, three grand and I'll make seven grand if it goes to $4 and goes to zero uh, respectively, all right? So that's the simplest way, just buy a put option. But what's the problem with just buying a put option? The problem is that when you buy an option, uh, you have to be right within that time frame. Within 120 days, it has to drop enough, right? Because what happens is when you buy an option, every day that passes, the option loses value because it loses time value, right? And you're losing money every day waiting for the stock to drop. And that's the problem with buying a put option, okay? So is there a way such that we can structure a trade so that every day that passes, I'm not losing value on the option? So time is not working against me and I can afford to wait until the stock collapses, right? And there's a way to do it. And uh, this was taught to me by my uh, options specialist, uh, Bang Fan Van, and he calls it the bear bang spread, right? And I'm gonna share, share with you a bit about how we use that technique so that we can profit if the stock collapses and if the stock doesn't go down, if it goes sideways or goes up, we lose a little bit, but we don't have the time decay working against us, right? So let's see how this works right now. All right, so the first method is to simply buy a put option, which I just showed you. Buy a put, um, and that's going to cost me uh, 74 cents. And like I said, the problem with buying a put option is that uh, you lose... Uh, time value every single day, right? The option decays until it's worthless, right? So uh, that's the problem. So is there another way where I can bet on the stock collapsing but not have to lose the value, uh, time value on the option, right? So one way to do it is something that we teach in our professional options trading course that's taught by myself and Bang Fan Van. So I'm going to share with you a bit about what we do in the professional online options trading course. So what we do is really simple, right? So in this second method, 
what we do is that we buy the put option like what we did in the first uh, method. So we're going to buy a put option at a strike price of $8, for example, right? And it's going to cost us money. It's going to cost us 74 cents, right? But what we're going to do is simultaneously, we are going to sell a call option at the strike price of $9. Now, why do we do that? Remember, when you sell an option, you collect premium. And you can use the premium to finance your long put option, right? So there we go. I'm going to sell a call and use the profits from selling the call to pay for buying the put. So I've got uh, a free trade in a way, right? But again, it's dangerous because when you sell a call, you're selling naked, right? And if the stock price goes up, you've got unlimited risk of loss if the stock goes up. So to hedge my short call, I will buy another call at a higher strike price of, for example, 11. So this trade has a three-legged option structure. We're gonna buy a put, sell a call, and buy another call at eight, nine, and 11, right? Now, when you do this, what happens? Let me show you. Really, really cool stuff, right? So let's go to the option chain again. And I could again choose the same expiry date of 20th of December, all right? So what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna buy a put. Let me just get rid of this. Okay. All right, so I'm going to buy the uh, eight strike put over here, click buy. And simultaneously, I'm gonna sell uh, the nine strike call. So go to calls and sell the nine strike. So sell will be here, boom. And buy the 11 strike call, which is here, boom. All right, there we go. Okay, so buy the buy the eight strike put, uh, sell the nine strike call, and buy the nine strike call. So by doing this, my cost of the trade now goes down to twenty four cents. Right, so it's a lot cheaper. So instead of paying uh, seventy cents, I now pay twenty four cents per contract. That's only $24 per contract, right? So it's a lot cheaper to structure, stru structure this trade. So let's take a look at um, the profit and loss graph and what it looks like with this strategy. So this strategy was actually invented my, by my good friend, Bang Fan Van, and he calls it the bear bang spread. Basically, it's a synthetic short stock plus a protective call. And it's really, really cool because what happens is that the profit and loss graph looks like that. It goes down, goes sideways, goes down, and goes like that. That's right, that's what it looks like, all right? So you can see over here, right? Goes down, goes sideways, goes down, and again, goes there. So it's limited risk, but almost unlimited return if the stock goes down, right? Now let's see how this works. Now. Recall what we said earlier on, the current stock price is $8.38. So there we are right now. We are currently at this level of break even. So zero is a break even point, right? Now, if the stock goes up, instead of going down to $9.70, somewhere over here, right? What happens? If the stock goes up to $9.70, I'm gonna cut my loss and how much am I going to lose? I'm going to lose uh, roughly, I'm going to lose about 90, uh, $97 at the very most. I'm going to lose $97. So that is my risk that I'm taking if I'm wrong. Okay, But if I'm right and the stock goes down to $4, if it drops by half, how much am I gonna make? I'm gonna make roughly about uh, $380. And if the stock goes to zero and goes bankrupt, I'm gonna make about uh, 800, well, $780. So that's a pretty cool trade. So again, I'm risking in a way a dollar to make almost $4 
and almost eight dollars now it looks the same as the previous buying the put right but the only difference is that for this particular setup uh what happens is that i do not have time decay working for me so every day that passes what happens is that i'm not losing time value in the first case if the stock did not go down if the stock went sideways i'll still be losing money because i'm losing time value but in this case if the stock goes sideways I don't lose money, right? I only lose money if it goes up, then I cut my loss. If it goes down, I make money. If it goes sideways, I don't lose money. And this is how we actually structure a trade to actually generate potential profits when the stock of a company goes down. So this can be used in two ways. Number one, if you don't own GE stock, this could be a way to profit if the stock collapses. Now, if you already own GE stock, then if it was me, and again, I'm not giving you advice, but if it was me, I'll get out long ago. If, I, if I've not gotten out, I'll get out, right? Just in case. But if for some reason I'm holding onto the stock because I still believe in it, but I like to protect myself if it's going to go bust, I could also use this strategy to hedge my position in GE if I own shares. But like I said, I don't own shares, but it could be used to protect you or to profit uh, if you don't own the shares in the first place. So I hope you've learned something from this and this is how you can actually use options to hedge your portfolio and to profit in any direction of the market. And if you want to learn more, do check out our professional options trading courses online at piranaprofits.com. Thank you for watching. May the markets be with you. And let's see what happens to the trade. I've got no idea, but let's see what happens. So if you want to be the first to get my next video on YouTube, do click the subscribe button right now. If you want to check out my online courses, go on to piranaprofits.com where you can enroll in our professional Forex, stock trading, options trading, and value momentum investing courses where you're going to learn how to trade like a professional and generate an income anywhere in the world. If you would like to come to Singapore to attend my live classes, Wealth Academy, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com. It's Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.